All right, what's going on, everybody? So normally I don't talk about individual pastors and specific ministries or denominations, but I could not help but reflect on some news that came out yesterday. Now, this pastor passed away yesterday. He's very famous for his in-touch ministries uh, for decades even. You probably have heard of him at some point as being a pastor of a church or at least a, a ministry, a worldwide ministry based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And he has just been influential in many ways to many people. Now, the same could be said, of course, of many other ministers and pastors and things like that. But I want to give you guys just a couple of words because right now we're in a season where a lot of people are learning a lot of different things, being impacted by a lot of different people. And you got people pointing at every single you know, other group saying, oh, this is a false teacher. This is a false prophet. Oh, that guy's good. That guy's bad. There's no one single person that ever has 100% of the accolades and just the vote of all the Christians in the world. Not everybody's going to agree and say, oh, I like this guy, that guy's good. Everybody, whether they are anointed, whether they have been given some responsibility in the body of Christ, right? You will know them by their fruit. All these people have a different role, different levels, different, all these things. And they're going to be used the way God is going to use them. And some people, they're going to have their moments where they shine, they're going to have moments for which they may fall, and vice versa. And so there's a lesson learned about who you listen to, what hits you, what kind, what kind of uh, interaction you've had with that person. And between you and God, and what you see, what you've interacted, what you've experienced with a certain person is what you, uh, you have. And no one's going to uh, take that away from you. No one, no one has to gaslight you into thinking that wasn't of God and all these things. And so... Uh, this man actually doesn't have much in, in terms of drama or various things. If you actually listen to this person, and just very quickly, I, I want to, the reason I'm speaking about this person is because this person actually helped me a lot uh, during school, during uh, my college days where I was really struggling with uh, many things that God was trying to teach me. And this man was being used uh, for uh, my growth. And there was a time in college and just in school where I was just so hungry for the Lord. And as a supplement, the Lord allowed me to listen to Charles Stanley. And I actually know him very well in the sense of his preaching, his style. I'll never forget his 20-minute sort of uh, little bite-sized sermons and just a lot of the work, different things that he's done but I remember listening to what may amount to hundreds of hours of sermons. I remember a time where I was struggling so bad about uh, understanding the timing of God, waiting on God, and being obedient, understanding the will of God, your calling, what God has for you, and just very uh, basic things about understanding the character of God, biblical teachings, biblical exegesis, just many things. And I remember just driving uh, to somebody, uh, a friend of mine that just uh, was like uh, many, many, many states away. And I just had to drive for days. And I just, I was just trying to leave, um, you know, all of the stuff that I was ever part of and just went for a drive because it was just a very low point for me during my uh, time in school. And I remember just driving, listening to nonstop, just hours and hours of Charles Stanley and how he was teaching me through his sermons about what it means to wait on the Lord. And some of these sermons came at, at the exact moment, right, uh, that I needed to hear it. And I was so touched. I remember listening to him, you know, as a supplement for at least half a decade. I don't listen to him, you know, these days. But just during that time, it was such a critical part of my growth process. And maybe some of you can say the same thing. But this man was a straight shooting, uh, Bible teaching, you know, person who just who literally he didn't have much controversy in the sense of theological this and that he he just spoke from the bible talked about the character of god and just many other topics right and i talk a lot about very controversial things the lord has led me in this direction for a reason but this man you know minus some things that people disagree about or just ha wasn't it wasn't they weren't happy about some of certain things this man for the most part blameless, upright from what I know, right? And, I, and I, again, I can't speak for his closed door life on other things, but what he did for me personally, his sermons, what he, the fruit that came out of his ministry, I can truly attest to that. And so I'm saying this because not only am I giving, you know, just my 
accolades, just my honor to this man and just what he's done this whole time. A lot of people can say very, you know, whatever they want, but to each their own, everybody, whether it's me and, you know, my ministry or any other person, God is using these people for a reason, for a certain season. And whether they have moments where they fall, get back up, whether they have moments where you're seeing a process of these guys growing and learning and maybe correcting certain theologies, whatever it is, these people are being used. And nobody, even and if, if you if you're coming outside in and you don't you don't know this man, you don't know any of these ministers or any other person that God is using for ministry. If you don't know that, you see one or two snippets and you think, oh, this is a false this and false that. I want to tell you that you don't know the full story that God, the way God sees it, and that other people have been touched and have literally been impacted on for their their life. And so I'm saying this because not only uh, to take a moment to you know acknowledge this man, and I listen to a lot of people, guys. I li- you would be surprised who I listen to. Everybody that people think is controversial, this and that, all the way down to people like Charles Stanley, which a lot of people will even say he's very just monotone, boring, just a typical, you know, this pastoral guy. But the substance that comes out of the way he explains certain things has also helped me to shape some of my ministry of giving exhorting words, giving encouraging words, talking about even the fundamental things. A lot of Christians, they have to get down the fundamental things. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? What does it, what does it mean for faith, for hope, for trusting the Lord? What does it mean to be still before Him? What does it mean to pray? What does it mean to use certain spiritual disciplines to help you in your walk and to understand His character? And so a lot of things He's done, but He's helped me in a certain sector of my life. He may not talk about a lot of other things. I don't know, eschatology. Maybe he has current events or other things, right? Interpretation, things like that. Perception of reality. He may not talk about those things, but God has used them, at least in my life, for certain things. And I'm saying this because to each your own, everybody is going to have certain uh, judgments, preconceived notions. They're going to have a viewpoint. They're going to say, oh, this guy's anything from extreme Right, all the way down to no, he he's truly is this he or she is truly a man of God that God is using for such a time as this, for a certain season, for certain purposes. And you would know, like you between you and the Lord, between you and the person, the relationship you have, remember, hold on to those things. And yes, it's a process. You may falter a little bit, you may get incorrect things that you're trying to wrestle with. Other people, they may say certain things. I know there's so many pastors right now, so many people online that are saying things that may be controversial. People are trying to argue with it and then cancel them, you know, outright uh, rather than seeing it in grace and give them, you know, a a pass on certain things. I mean, whatever. I'm not going to talk about all this drama that just continually happens with certain people. But this man, one of just many people that has that have impacted my life. I'm just so thankful. I'm in, in reflection of even those days where I was so down with my life, my spiritual life, and He's helped me to get back to focusing and fixating on the Lord and what He's done for me and being reminded and then empowering me, motivating me to do the ministry that I'm doing right now. And I say this for, there's many other people, right, uh, that have impacted my life, but I'm saying this because a lot of us are too fierce and too uh, unaware of the impact that certain people have, calling them certain things, or maybe even the opposite, elevating them to a certain degree, to an idolizing status in some sense. You don't want to be in any of those extreme extremes. So let it be. Let God work. He's using the body of Christ for a reason. Some people have strengths. Some people have weaknesses. Some people make mistakes along the process uh, in the in this journey that they're in. But God is using, if they are really truly anointed men and women of God, God is using them for a certain role, for a certain season, for a certain mission, a, a, a portion of the kingdom work of God. And so I can safely say for this man, from his CDs and books and audio tapes, all the way down to all the things that he's ever done, he's used, he's been used for a specific role. And I'm very thankful of that. I'm reminded of that. But as an exhortation to you from who you listen to, 
right? Don't be, don't be uh, moved by all these other opinions of people. Oh, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should, maybe, I, maybe this guy is a false whatever, maybe this guy is too much of a whatever, whatever that, forget all of that. Between you and God, when you listen to somebody, when you see a certain person, when you go to a certain church, when you sit among a congregation of people, whatever God has shown you, told you, moved you to do, let that sink in for you because there's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be people that nobody agrees with. Every, not one person in this world, even Jesus Christ himself, people disagreed. They, there were Pharisees, Sadducees. There's all these people in the world that are going to say certain things. But God, he sees the heart. He sees what you do, how you move, how you're being used. And then other people, to those that need to hear and that have ears to hear, uh, ears to hear right? Uh, eyes to see, they will see. They will hear what they need to hear. And that's all that matters because God is using that at a certain time to, to build the body of Christ and to, to have fruit in the ministry that they are in. So I just want to give you guys this quick encouraging word as I give um, tribute, honor, uh, and just in remembrance of what this man did personally for my life. Um, teared up a little bit uh, right before I you know, did this video. But at the same time, for what's happening in the body of Christ, what you have to do to increase your discernment, increase your resolve, to stand firm on what God has shown you, not what everybody else has shown you and continue in your walk with him. So God bless you guys. Love you guys. God is using amazing men and women of God across the globe for various things, various topics, various uh, theological things, whatever it is that God is using because we are the body of Christ. Love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.